James Kaufman will news report today. Today is December 30th, 2022, 1130 a.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, we're in a geomagnetic storm and disturbance. It depends on what KP index you look at. Uh, the Boulder KP index says that we're seeing a KP5 currently, but if we use the college KP index, we've been in a geomagnetic storm of a 5, 6, and 7 for the last 9 hours. Now, that would be all fine and dandy, but let's listen to how NOAA explains where these solar winds came from. Another new interesting situation. So over to NOAA, we see that they've come up with something called a SEER, and we've heard of SEER before, but now they've come up with a CHISS influence. And we're going to find out what that means, but basically they're blaming Coronal Hole 59 plus, which means it's on the Northern Hemisphere. They're not even considering this as part of these solar winds that are upwards of 550 kilometers per second. This has not been earth facing for very, very long time, but I'm going to read what they wrote this morning as their, well, explanation of what's going on. Something new every day. G1 minor storm levels will reach late evening December 29th through early December 30th UTC day. Now remember, most of the KP indexes say we're getting hit the hardest right now, which is not early on the 30th UTC wise. The elevated geomagnetic responses were in reaction to a disturbed and enhanced solar wind field due to the influences of a co-rotating interaction region, a SEER, which was only introduced to the public in 2022, ahead of an isolated, positive polarity coronal hole high-speed stream, a CHHSS, CHHSS, okay? Again, that's a coronal hole high-speed stream interacting with a SEER or co-rotating interaction region that was ahead of this high-speed solar stream. This CHHSS was located in the solar northern hemisphere CH-59 plus has not been earth-facing in at least six days. SEER arrival enhanced the interplanetary magnetic field strength over to a 10 and T and prolonged periods of a southward direction component also manifested. When the BZ component is directed southward, opposite that of Earth's northward directed magnetic field, a better potential for enhanced geomagnetic response may be achieved. Following SEER arrival, CHHSS onset began with solar wind speeds escalating to 500 km per second and even reached over 550 km per second later. As the SEER passed, which of course it hasn't because we're in the worst part of the storm, and the IMF strength weakened, solar winds speeds are likely to remain elevated over the next two days. However, primarily geomagnetic field responses of unsettled to active levels are anticipated for the 31st of December through January 1st. And again, they're blaming CH-59 positive. Meanwhile, a more favorable located and trans-equatorial CH, Kronel Hole, Kronel Hole 60 negative, is anticipated to rotate into a geoeffective position later next week. And space weather forecasters continue to evaluate the potential for a NOAA space weather scale level increase. 
Continue to visit our webpage for the latest information and forecasts. So they're saying we're in a heavy geomagnetic storm still because of coral hole 59 plus and I will show y'all where that is and this could be ongoing through today the 31st and 1st this is almost laughable it seems like they've made up something new again now nothing happened on the 28th that would have caused any type of storm like we're seeing today so they had to make something up right we have in fact had an M flare today. It was an M1.46, not a large M flare, but in fact an M flare, and most probably from 3176 and Earth facing. This is NOAA's new official KP index breakdown, and you'll see two KP5 minor geomagnetic storms, uh, well, from six to nine. Central time here in the USA, or from 0 hundred to 300 UTC time, and then again the last three hours. That, of course, is not what we saw when we looked at all the KP indexes together. We saw that it was much stronger and seemed to be increasing in strength. Heading over to Ghost Solar Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms. This is the crawl hole that they're blaming everything on. It's pretty much completely ridiculous, as it's not been Earth-facing. And that was that M flare right there. And it was from 3176, just as we suspected. But it's so hard to believe that we're experiencing 550 kilometer plus solar winds because of a coral hole over here, and that this could go on for two more days, maybe through to the first very very hard to believe if not impossible so i want you to see what's going on we have slightly elevated plasma and it does go up to 18 and 19 centimeters cubed but look at the solar winds they started the day well really here at about 480 and we're upwards almost into the 600 kilometer per second range and this is unexplainable solar winds as I said yesterday so they've come up with a sear hitting a crawl hole high speed stream creating this effect now again this is gonna be the first time I have ever heard of this but we do in fact have solar winds at right around 600 kilometers per second currently hitting the planet and again, NOAA has forecasted that this could go on to the 31st and 1st. And again, that crawl hole has not been Earth-facing for four or five days. Completely ridiculous, but you can see it with your own eyes. They had to come up with a whole new theory, one I've not heard or seen them use before, to explain how we're experiencing 600 kilometer per second solar winds. What a mess Noah is. If we only knew what the truth was. God bless you and yours, folks. Please share and subscribe. And always remember that anything is possible in Bizarro World.